Namo Amida Bu. The True Teaching on Amida Buddha and His Pure Land by Rev. Joshua Adrian Salia. Chapter 2 The True Teaching on Amida Buddha and His Pure Land. Part 5 The Two Aspects of the Pure Land. The pure land of Amida Buddha has two main aspects, the ultimate Dharmakaya aspect and the manifestation or Sambhogakaya recompense aspect. The first aspect, Dharmakaya, means that the pure land is nirvanic in its essence, as it was stated in the larger sutra. Quote, My land being like nirvana itself, will be beyond comparison." End quote. This means that all the manifestations of the Pure Land are grounded in the perfect enlightenment of Amida Buddha and are conducive to enlightenment. We ourselves will attain enlightenment when we are born in the Pure Land, because the essence of the Pure Land is enlightenment, nirvana, dharmakaya itself. Otherwise, if the Pure Land was not an enlightened realm, it would produce only sensorial attachments like other samsaric realms do. But Shakyamuni Buddha and our masters were very clear that this is not the case. Also, Bodhisattva Vasubandha stated in his Jodaron, quote, The adornments of the land of the Buddha of immeasurable life are the wondrous manifestations of the ultimate reality. End quote. And in the essentials of faith alone, Master Saikaku said, quote, The land of bliss is the realm of nirvana, the uncreated. End quote. The uncreated refers to ultimate Dharmakaya beyond forms, which is the essence of all Buddhas in their lands. From this Dharmakaya emerge all the manifestations for the sake of saving sentient beings in accordance with the specific vows of different Buddhas. In our case, the pure land of Amida appeared when he attained perfect enlightenment and thus brought his 48 vows to fulfillment. In that moment, his land took the form and manifestations described in the sutras, and especially in his 31st and 32nd vows, while also maintaining its formless Dharmakaya essence. Secondly, about the Sambhogakaya recompense aspect of the Pure Land, Shinran Shonen said, quote, We clearly know from the Tathagata's teachings of truth and the Master's commentaries that the Pure Land of peace and provision is the true land of recompense. End quote. This is because the Pure Land is the effect or recompense of Dharmakara's practices and vows, and it came into existence when Bodhisattva Dharmakara became Amida Buddha. Quote, when I contemplate recompense, I find that the accomplished land has resulted as the recompense for the Tathagata's ocean-like vow, hence recompensed. End quote. So, being a re recompensed Samboga Kaya land, Pure land is the result or recompense of the fulfillment of the 31st vow. Quote, if, when I attain Buddhahood, my land should not be resplendent, revealing in its light all the immeasurable, innumerable, and inconceivable Buddha lands, like images reflected in a clear mirror, may I not attain perfect enlightenment. End quote. And the 32nd vow, quote, if, when I attain Buddhahood, all the myriads of manifestations in my land from the ground to the sky, such as palaces, pavilions, ponds, streams and trees, should not be composed of both countless treasures, which surpass in supreme excellence anything in the worlds of humans and devas, and of a hundred thousand kinds of aromatic wood, whose fragrance pervades all the worlds of the ten quarters, causing all bodhisattvas who sense it to perform Buddhist practices, then may I not attain perfect enlightenment." End quote. The light of the Pure Land is the light of Amida Buddha, the Pure Land itself being the transcendental manifestation of Amida Buddha. This is why the 31st vow is closely related with the 12th vow, showing the unity between Amida as an enlightened person and his Pure Land. The myriads of manifestations mentioned in the 32nd vow show that the Pure Land surpasses all other places in the world of suffering. Quote, surpass in supreme excellence anything in the worlds of humans and devas. End quote. In fact, the Pure Land is beyond Samsara and cannot be 
compared with the realms caught in the power of birth and death, thus subject to impermanence. Humans, devas or gods, plus other kinds of sentient beings and the environments in which they are born are the product of their unenlightened karma, but the pure land of Amida is the manifestation of his supreme enlightenment and pure merits. So all its treasures and manifestations are supreme in beauty, while in the same time, they have the power to deepen and strengthen the dedication of those engaged in the practice of liberating themselves and others, bodhisattvas. Quote, A hundred thousand kinds of aromatic wood, whose fragrance pervades all the worlds of the ten quarters, causing all bodhisattvas who sense it to perform Buddhist practices. End quote. It is obvious that the treasures found in the pure land are not intended for the enjoyment of the six senses, but for expressing the Dharma, calling beings to the Dharma, praising Amida's virtues, and showing the supreme place this enlightened land occupies among other Buddha lands. They are spiritual treasures, even if they are described using the terms we are familiar with, like palaces, pavilions, ponds, streams, and trees, aromatic wood, etc. Shinran shown and distinguished between two aspects of Amida's pure land as a recompensed land, Zambogakaya. Firstly, the fulfilled pure land, sometimes named the true recompense land, and secondly, the transformed pure land. It is important to emphasize that both are the rewards of the vows of Amida Buddha, so they are not different realms, but part of the same recompensed Sambhogakaya pure land. This is why I call them two aspects and not two pure lands. Those born in the fulfilled pure land are followers of the true faith, Shinjin, of the 18th vow, primal vow, and they immediately attain nirvana or Buddhahood, while those who are born in the transformed pure land are followers of the 19th and 20th vows. The latter are people with mixed faith, faith, and so they need to stay for a while in that place until they overcome their doubts. As Master Shantao called it, birth in the fulfilled land of the pure land is called, quote, inconceivable birth, end quote and all those born there are, quote, endowed with bodies of naturalness, emptiness, and infinity, end quote. To have body, bodies of naturalness, emptiness, and infinity means to become a Buddha or to attain perfect enlightenment. The pure land and the aspect of the transformed land is as described in the, quote, 13 contemplations, end quote, and the, quote, nine grades of aspirants, end quote, from the Contemplation Sutra but also in the larger sutra and other texts. As Shinran explained, quote, the transformed land refers to the pure land as shown in the contemplation sutra. Again, it is as described in the sutra on the bodhisattvas dwelling in the womb, Usatsu Shotai Kaio, namely the realm of sloth and pride. Again, it is as described in the larger sutra as the castle of doubt and the womb palace, end quote. So, the borderland, Henji, realm of sloth and pride, Kemen, the castle of doubt, Hiju, and the womb palace, Taigu, are different names for the transformed land aspect of the pure land, which is where the followers of the 19th and 20th vows are born. To recite the Nimbutsu in self-power, or to do other Buddhist practices to gain birth in Amida's land, results in not entering directly into the center of the pure land, or the fulfilled pure land but in staying for a while in this transformed land. People born there do not immediately attain the state of Buddhahood, like those born in the center of the pure land, through the gate of the primal vow. But they are also free, once and for all, from the suffering of birth and death in samsara. They are safe, but they are still not enlightened. In the same time, being in the special environment of this borderland of the pure land, they have the opportunity to overcome their doubts and entrust completely in Amida Buddha. When they do this, they also enter the fulfilled pure land and attain nirvana, perfect enlightenment or Buddhahood. Referring to the transformed land, borderland of the pure land, Shinran said, quote, Since practitioners of Shinjin are few, many are guided to the transformed land. End quote. Master Shantao also said, quote, Those born in the fulfilled pure land are extremely few. Those born in the transformed pure land are many. End quote. Again, I stress the importance that both the transformed land and the fulfilled pure land, or true land of recompense, are aspects of the same pure land of Amida Buddha, just like the anteroom 
and the main room are parts of the same house. As usual, the owner of the house, in our case Amida Buddha, prefers to stay in the main room together with his faithful sons, that is, followers of the 18th vow, while those who have a mixed faith, followers of the 19th and 20 vows, 20th vows, keep themselves in the anteroom. It is not the fault of Amida or a punishment that some are born in the borderland of the pure land, transformed land, just they are being kept in that region by their own doubts. They are the ones who are keeping themselves out of the main room of the pure land, not Amida Buddha. So when they overcome their doubts, they will also join the fulfilled pure land and immediately attain Nirvana, Buddhahood. Namo Amida Buddha.